Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist with a plant science minor. In today's video, we are talking about aspirin. This is literally one of the top requested videos I've gotten in this last little bit. No idea why, you're all obsessed with it. I'm assuming there's some sort of influencer somewhere that did a video on it, telling you to use it, and you all flooded to my DMs and comments asking for a video on whether or not it is true. So if you're not familiar with this series, it is the series where we go through myths and we myth bust using science. And this is a not busted myth, but kind of busted myth. There's a lot going on here and there's a couple lies and a few truths. So let's jump into exactly what the science says about aspirin. And at the end, I will give you a recommended re recipe given by a university to use both on your house plants or in your garden and the specific application method you should be using if you choose to use aspirin in the garden. So there is some merit to it, but we'll get into the details. If I'm looking down at my, sh my um, laptop here, I apologize. I just want to get all the names and the data correct because I had to sort through quite a few scientific journals just to get you get you the best content possible. So that's what we do on this page. Oh, and smash that like button and maybe share it if you enjoy it because honestly, a huge portion of my followers are coming from you guys sharing my video on different forums, Facebook groups, whatever the case is. So share away, I do not mind, smiley face. And if you are here from a share, hi, hello, how are you? Welcome, let me know if you want anything specific in the comments down below. So acetosilic acid is what aspirin actually is. In order to understand why aspirin works to help plants, we need to first understand what aspirin is made from. So it is made from a compound called called acetosilic acid and it is actually an active ingredient that is found in willow bark specifically something that naturally occurs in the plant world the key to all of this is that aspirin when exposed to water turns into salicylic acid and acetic acid so two different compounds only when exposed to water and this is important we'll talk about why that is later on so because of this people have made the jump there has been a ton of studies done on the silic acid of the willow and the trees and specifically using salic acid in plants to help with responses to disease pests maybe some damage from turbulent winds, whatever the case is. So because we know salic acid is used in plants as a way to increase or decrease certain hormones and in a way to react to stimuli from the outdoors, people saw or knew that this was an aspirin and they wanted to take that component out of it and apply it to plants. So while aspirin isn't the pure form of what's used in a lot of the studies in regards to this product's ability to help plants, it is it has a derivative of it. And that's why a lot of people think it works. Now, huge disclaimer here, this stuff can be toxic to some plants. So you need to Google what plants it's going to work for and which plants it should not work for. You can simply do this through just looking salic acid, plants that benefit from salic acid, and it's gonna tell you mostly nightshade plants benefit from it, but there's a huge portion of indoor plants that will benefit, and there's a huge portion of other vegetables that will benefit, but not all, not all it can cause damage on some plants, mostly because this is present in a very minute quantity across all plants. It's when we introduce too much of it that we end up with a burn. It essentially looks like a fertilizer burn. So keep that in mind. It's also important to note that none of the studies done by universities or written by laboratories used aspirin, the name brand, or any derivative of it. They use the pure form of salic acid in the whole thing. Some of the studies used vegetables, others used flowers, and some even used cut flowers. So this mixed into water for a cut flower can actually preserve your cut flower for longer. So the there's no specific study that was used um, 
on one specific plant every single time, but they did find when they used it on nightshade plants or just in plants in general, that there was a lot more foliage and a fuller plant overall and the harvests tend to be better. Now, there are some minor claims on the interwebs about it increasing flavor or making peppers and tomatoes taste better. There's zero science to back any of this up. It's mostly showing that it helps prevent or reverse pest disease damage, that sort of thing. So if you have a powdery mildew attack, maybe some thrips, things like that, and you want your plant to bounce back quicker, then using this will work. So what they found out was when they activated a mechanism within the plant that they label as SAR, this is just a, a general term that they use to identify a process in which the plant reacts to harmful stimuli, such as a cut, a bump, maybe a pest munching on it, salicylic acid is released. And this acid is released both to the infected area and then to the plant as a whole. And what happens is when it's released, it activates the power hormone to help amplify growth, cell division, that sort of thing. So what this means is that the product doesn't attack per se the disease or the pest, it's helping the plant fight or um, not even really fight, but just help the plant grow at a rate that counteracts the damage being done by these harmful pests. Well, the way that these studies have done the tests on salicylic acid, not aspirin, because they never actually used aspirin, they used a derivative of aspirin. When they did these tests, they sprayed it foliar on the plant. So it was sprayed onto the plant's upper biomass and not near the soil or the roots of any sort. So what ended up happening is they got this response throughout the entire plant. However, it caused some issues that may or may not cause problems with your plant if over applied. The first one being glycosylation of the SA, so the stelic acid, and then phytotoxicity immediately after that, which and generally decrease the effectiveness of that, that SA, the salic acid. So what ended up happening is because it was applied to the plant in layman's terms, it worked for a short period of time. There was a sudden burst of um, cell division and just craziness going on to help counteract the outer stimuli. But over time, that salic acid can build up too much and ultimately make it toxic to itself. So make the plant toxic to itself. So while it works in tiny bits, you don't want too much of it circulating throughout the plant. So that makes sense because, I mean, if a plant's under attack continually and it's releasing this relatively toxic substance throughout its biomass, it's going to cease to exist. So. It works, but in small doses, and it has a very short lifespan within the plant. It is like a burst and then it is done. In nature, that's what's going on. When we apply it, it's very quick to come and go, but we we don't wanna over apply. So what is the magic number that these companies or that these universities used? It was around 300 milligrams mixed into four gallons of water, which is 11.5 liters specifically. And they applied it once every three weeks, again, foliar. So they sprayed it on. Now there are a few studies that I looked at that had some really specific recommendations if you are going to do like a peer review on any of this. And the first one being is that it should be applied at night because you don't want to apply it during the day. It can cause burn or amplification of the sun, not because of the water droplets. We've already debunked that. Check out that video if you haven't seen it, but that's kind of, you want to apply it at night mostly, help with absorption, reduce the rates of evaporation, that sort of fun stuff. And then the other reason for applying at night was actually because they didn't want to harm any sort of pollinators, bugs, little critters that like crawling around on the leaves because it is an acid. Um, obviously the aspirin version isn't as concentrated as what these universities were using, but it is still something that could ultimately affect the pollinators in your area. So 
do it at night is kind of the only rule. Beyond that, double check your plant to make sure your plant will accept it just fine. Nightshade plant family, like I said, does well. Trees do well with it. Bush will do well with it. But there are some out there that won't benefit greatly, like carrots and stuff. Not a good idea. So yeah. And then the way to know if you've overapplied or misused this is a browning edges or black spots. Brown spots that look burnt specifically i guess they they have a fertilizer burning effect so there you guys go i have officially put my take on this let me know where you saw this and what they said i didn't really look up what other people have said about it influencer wise but this is what the science tells us it tells us that none of the studies initially done were using aspirin zero of them actually use aspirin all of the brands are using the or all the universities all the labs all the journals have used actual salic acid to do the study with and they produced good results they had more foliage they had more vegetable production they had healthier plants now they only applied it once every three weeks it was heavily diluted and it was in the pure form so if you choose to use this version of it um you're going to want to follow the directions and not over apply because you may cause a burning and make sure you google to make to see if your plant will handle it or not i will leave a link down below for aspirin and i will leave the formula for that aspirin that i choose in the comment section as well so if you buy the bottle that i have linked i will give you the recipe based on these milligrams what you need to add to how much water that makes sense that makes sense so you can use that recipe and uh you will be made in the shade anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments down below if you've used aspirin what results you've seen i'm assuming you saw good results i don't see any reason why this wouldn't work i, I think it would work well i've personally never done it but there's no reason why it's not going to the science definitely shows that it will but that's all i have for you guys I hope you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button if I didn't ask you to do that already. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.